All right, so I've got a question here from a student. The student is uh, asking, what is going on with this code? And so there's um, some, basically what this is is a question about coding schemes. And so if I run this right here, format it and run it, and this is the code that was sent over, except I added in, and the red just sometimes occurs. I added in these lines right here. So we have uh, A, is equal to, and A is a variable, we are declaring that this variable A is of type string. So we're declaring a variable is of a certain type. And so then we're assigning a string to A. We're printing that string out, and we're seeing the type of that. And so we print out John Wick, we print out string, that's fine. And then we create, he's creating his own type here, and this is aliasing a type. And, uh, and this happens sometimes, like in godoc.org, we have the time package. And, uh, and a duration is an alias for an int64. Generally speaking, you shouldn't alias a type. Type duration is an int64. So that's just kind of like, a, for example, learning about types. We alias types. Occasionally it's done. Even the standard library does it. But generally speaking, you shouldn't create your own types. You should use the types that already come, you know, for, for like an int or a string. You shouldn't alias those types. For a struct, yeah, we create a struct all, all day long. And what that looks like is type struct, type person, underlying struct, and then our fields. And we have like first is a string and age is an int, right? So that would be creating type person and the underlying type is a struct. But to create like your own score int, that doesn't happen very often, and, and some people, Bill Kennedy says this is really bad practice to alias type, even though occasionally it is done. You wanna, you wanna really think about it. So that's the first thing. And then we're creating a variable B, which is of type score. And so here we're assigning 892 to B. We print that out, we get 892, and then we get the type when we print out the type, and that is uh, it's type score from package main. And then down here, taking B, that number, 892, and converting it to a string and assigning it to A. And then printing out the value, which is this right here, and then printing out the type. So what is going on? This gave me weird results. Why is that giving you weird results? Well, if we were to copy this bit right there and paste it again, and we just put a number in here, like 72, and then we print that out. We don't need this here because these won't be weird results. And then we print that out. Let me just format that and run it. We get H, capital letter H. And if we go to ASCII wiki, Wikipedia, to talk about ASCII, ASCII is a coding scheme. And UTF-8, which is the coding scheme that Go uses, and it's the most popular coding scheme in the world, uh, uses uh, ASCII as the first couple of things. And you can see the number 72 here, whether it's represented in decimal, in binary, or in hexadecimal. Right, that translates to H. And so when you took the number, you know, 892, that translates to some character. Like that number is this character, just like the number 72 is this character H. Right? And so that's, uh, that's, that's what happened when you converted a, a number to a string. It figured out that, oh, this number is that string. It's pretty much what's happening. All right, so that's uh, hopefully uh, gives you clarity on your question as to why you got that symbol when you converted this number 892 to a string and then printed it out.